Welcome to Stamp Sleuth. This show is about Canadian stamps because, well, we are Canadian. So let's get started. This is a map of Canada, showing Canada north of the United States and oddly south of the United States. The first stamp issued by Canada was issued in 1851. It is the Impreferate Beaver, a pence issue, because at that time we were using a British currency and we were actually considered a province and related to the Commonwealth. In 1859, we were, uh, turned to the cents and we issued our own one cent Queen Victoria and a one cent beaver. Those were the first two uh, Canadian stamps issued, 1859. As time went on, we became a little bit more uh, diverse and we began with the large queen issues. These are a three cent and a six cent issue. These are the small queens of Canada. Again, this is Queen Victoria shown. At the top is a half cent Queen Victoria, which was the, the lowest uh, price for uh, mail at the time, which is incredible considering what mail costs nowadays. And this one goes up to the 10 cent issue. Again, the small queens, a little closer look at the half cent. And uh, again, small queens. At, uh, in 1897, it was the Diamond Jubilee of Queen Victoria's reign. So Canada issued commemoratives for that era, beginning with a half cent jubilee, which I don't have. And they went up uh, to, to 15 cents. This was in 1897. That same year, they issued smaller uh, issues of a Canadian stamp, beginning with the one the half cent. And again, this went up to the 10 cent. And then in 1890, they were issued uh, a series where the instead of just maple leaves and, and lettering, they actually had the numerical value of the stamps. Canada issued its first Christmas stamp in 1898. And this, this is the one here at the top. And this is interesting because it actually shows the, the uh, Commonwealth countries. And uh, it was, again, the first uh, Christmas stamp issued in 1898. Again, most of the stamps at that time featured royalty because we were a commonwealth and still are a commonwealth country, though a lot of historical figures. This is Jacques Cartier and Samuel de Champlain and uh, historical events. This is the King George V set. Goes from one cent through to a dollar. This was issued uh, between 1911 and 1931. They're rather lovely stamps. They also come in coil. And if you remember, coils have a straight edge. These ones have it on the side with perforations at the top. These ones also are the same. Some of them have coils where it's on the top and the bottom and the perforations are on the sides. These were issued between 1912 and 1924. These are war tax stamps, which we'll talk more about later on during the war era, the first world war, as a matter of fact. This set here commemorates the uh, 50th anniversary of Confederation in Canada in 1917. This is a complete set. This set, issued in 1927, commemorate, commemorates the 60th anniversary of Confederation. You will notice that there are several of these King George issues with different uh, frames. This is called the scroll issue. And again, I do not, do not have the whole entire set. And then at one point, Canada began to do non, uh, a lot of non-royalty uh, stamps. One of the most favored stamps in Canada is the uh, Blue Nose. So much so that at one point, they actually issued a little lapel pin depicting the Blue Nose. As I mentioned earlier, the King George comes in different frames. This is called the maple leaf issue because it has maple leaves in the ca uh, corners and an arched frame, which is different to the scroll issue. You can see here that they, they don't have maple leaves in the corner and they have a curled frame. This is more of that uh, maple leaf issue going up to the $1 value. At one point, Canada began to issue airmails. 
This one here is 1932. And again, 1932 overprint. This one commemorates an Ottawa conference as well. This is the King George medallion issue with a more or less cameo-like uh, image on it, including the coil stance. As time went on in the 30s, we started to depict uh, scenics and historical. This is the 400th anniversary of the landing of Cartier. And the next generation of royals started to appear on stamps. We started to portray some of our iconic symbols, for example, the RCMP. Air mails became a little more common in 1935, including a special delivery express. This is the King George pictorial and some of the scenics, including a uh, air mail, six cent air mail. At one point, uh, official stamps were issued, and I don't know if you can see it, but these have got little holes perforated in them. And uh, those were put out by uh, anything to do with Majesty's service. Canada was really uh, good at uh, depicting royal visits. This depicts the 1939 royal visit. These are the Second World War effort issues. And as you can see, it's got a lot of equipment uh, used in battle. These are special delivery, which got to be more common as uh, time progressed. Again, officials, you can see that they're perforated with holes, including the battleship at the bottom. These ones as well show that. One in the top there does. Okay, we'll have that. These ones are overprinted OHMS on Her Majesty's service. These are just your common issues. Again, iconic uh, images such as the Canada Goose. And these now are post-war, 1947 onward. These are mint. Now, most collectors do not like to stick their mint down like this. They like to use those little sleeves. But unfortunately, this collection belonged to somebody that uh, didn't have access to that. And these are your more common modern stamps. The King George V, 1950s. Uh, another overprint used for government service is the G overprint. And you can see them here, Gs. That's for uh, use in official government mailing. Some more G officials down here. And OHMS on Her Majesty's service. And then we got to, into starting to show prime ministers and then some of our modes of transportation. This here commemorates that three pen, a penny beaver stamp that was first issued in, in 51, 1851. Some of our iconic animals are, are normally issued on stamps, polar bear, moose, sheep, again, the queen. You can actually learn a lot about countries from their stamps because they depict industry, such as the textile industry. They depict cultural aspects such as the totem pole, and they'll depict natural aspects, such as the wildlife. Again, these are Queen Elizabeth. This one's interesting because it shows uh, several things. It shows uh, prime ministers again, uh, an Inuit paper industry, and some of our wildlife. Again, they were very common depictions in, uh, in stamps. Most countries do that, and like I said, you can learn a lot about a country just by looking at the pictures. Uh, this one here is depicting a outdoor sports popular in 1957. So uh, people can learn that Canada likes to kayak, swim, hunt, and ski. Hockey started to be shown in the 50s. And here it shows a hockey player. And again, our wildlife. Royal visits are often commemorated. This is the 1957 royal visit. 
Some of the things that are interest, uh, important to the country, such as national health, oil industry, uh, NATO, are often depicted on Canadian stamps and other countries. The St. Lawrence Seaway is depicted on this. This stamp is actually also issued in the United States, I believe, with a similar image. Pauline Johnson, one of our historic people, is on there, as well as uh, author Megan, a prime minister. These are just mints that are fairly common. All these stamps here that I'm showing you are more common. The earlier ones are not. Um, again, this is Queen Elizabeth. And it's showing the different variations, just a regular. These have a phosphor bar in them, which won't show up unless you have black light. These are officials, and these are coils. The sets that Canada issued are quite famous because a lot of times they made large sets. These are the provincial arms and flowers. And this is interesting because you learn without a, well, having to open a book about the provincial flowers and the coat of arms of each province. Again, another royal visit in 1964. So you can trace the history of royal visits through the stamps. Canada also uh, began really paying attention to Christmas issues. This is 1964. Again, because we're a Commonwealth country, we um, commemorate uh, Commonwealth personalities such as Winston Churchill. Another early Christmas issue, 1966. Uh, commemoratives of 1967 Expo, 1967 Centennial Year, 1967 Pan American Games, 1967 Royal Visit. This is a, fair, a, a complete set of the 1967 pictorials. It starts at one cent and goes to a dollar and it includes the coils. Again, 1967 Christmas. And this shows more of the Christmas. These ones are all tagged. Again, that won't show up unless you have a black light, but this collector collected those. This is an interesting page because it's uh, a United Nations Expo 67 issue. And it's a tribute to Canadian Universal and Inter International Exhibition in 67. Again, wildlife. The narwhal and some of our uh, other scientific uh, meteorology, hydrology. A lot of times it commemorates uh, historical individuals. Uh, this here is a, a artwork that is depicted. Some of our birds. So you can look at these stamps and realize, okay, those birds are uh, indigenous to Canada. This is a 1970 Expo in Osaka, and again, it's provincial flowers in this case. And that, is, that was a mint copy. This is the used copy. Again, these are just more or less regular stamps that you see in most people's collections. Christmas really became uh, interesting in the 70s when Canada began issue, issuing larger sets. These are actually from children's drawings. Again, some more 25th anniversary of the United Nations. So that tells you Canada is interested or associated with the UN. Here we have Emily Carr being commemorative, commemorative in a stamp. Maple Leafs, Four Seasons, is a, a really nice little set. Radio in Canada, it tells you the fact that we have that ability in our country. Here's another Paul Kane, Artist of Canada, another Christmas set. More Christmas sets, showing them complete. This is the landscapes. They start at 10 and go to 2. This is the first year that a $2 stamp 
it was notably issued as far as I'm aware of. This is the Earth Sciences issue, quite coveted, and again, another full Christmas issue. Canada has been very good at commemorati commemorating its First Nations people. These are both Satanot. Mint on that side, used on this side. Postage dues, which I will talk about more later on. That's if you didn't pay enough mail, they actually charged you more money when you came to pick up your letters. This is the entire 1972 Christmas issue, both tagged and untagged. This person collected both. Here's that Earth Sciences issue, and they're in uh, blocks of four. Very attractive stamps. Uh, RCMP issues here. They often commemorate RCMP on stamps. This and this. And again, a First Nations, a First Nations issue. This is one of the more attractive uh, Queen Elizabeth uh, uh, stamps commemorating the 1973 Commonwealth meetings. Another thing that Canada really uh, takes pride in is uh, its Olympics. This is commemorati commemorating the 1973 Montreal Olympics. An another Christmas issue. Every year, Canada issues Christmas stamps, and they're quite decorative and lovely. Again, First Nations. More First Nations. These are pre-Olympic sports. And then the 1974 Olympic Games. Canada also likes to commemorate uh, important industries in its country. And this one shows the 100th anniversary of the first letter car carrier in 1974. And this is a block. Another pre-Olympic issue. Another Christmas issue. There are some people that'll just collect mint Canadian Christmas stamps. Another Satanot First Nations issue. And there's some more here. We, Canada really paid homage to, to the indigenous peoples of our country in postal stamps. Olympic Games in Montreal, 1976, again. These are two lovely Olympic stamps. They're the one and two dollar uh, issues. The Sprinter and the Plunger. These are more uh, Olympics, pole vault, running, and hurdles, as well as pre-Olympics. And these are actually called um, semi-postals because part of the funding goes towards a cause or charity. This is the Satanant. This is that same Olympics uh, set only in mint. Uh, some more Christmas issues, and this time, again, it's children's drawings. And then a block of, of boats. These are more of the Olympic stamps. These are all semi-postals. You can see that they have an 8 plus 2, a 10 plus 15, and a 5 plus 15, and it's the same repeated down below. More of the um, surcharge stamps here. And then Olympics again, and this is uh, arts and culture involved in the Olympics in Montreal, 1976. These are the used versions. The others were mint. This is uh, 1976 Olympics once again, winter ones. And the game sites, and these are a lovely set of stamps. RCMP, again, that's the Satanant, and then those Olympic ones as used. And more Olympics. We really like our Olympics here in Canada. We really like our sports. These are called landscapes, and uh, they're a fairly plain issue, but they're rather nice because they're quite complete. Again, same issues, 1976 issues. Silver of Jubilee for the Queen. Inland Vessels, that's block, would, is normally a block of four. Here they're just two Satanants. Uh, a floor and fawn, again, uh, is big in Canadian issues, and this is showing uh, various uh, flowers that are in Canada. Another artist here is being commemorated, Tom Thompson. 
and that's in a Satanat block or a set. Again, sailing vessels, and this time First Nations in Christmas. Inuit hunting, First Nations. And this is a block of six of that same issue. Actually, it's two blocks of four, my correction. Canada often also commemorated their early stamps. This is the 1978 Capex uh, phil Philatelic Exhibition in Toronto, and it's depicting one of the early, the 12 penny queen, Victoria. Commonwealth Games, so you can tell that we take part in that. James Cook and resource development. Okay, this is Christmas 1977 at the top. And street scenes. So it gives you, it tells you that, okay, you know, in some areas we have uh, more older buildings and other areas are more modern. Okay, this is the KPEX 78 Philatelic Exhibition in Toronto and the street scenes. What's neat about that exhibition is they actually put it out in a sheet, a uh, souvenir sheet. And these are quite coveted because they showed the four stamps and the information on the exhibition and the years that it was uh, commemorating, commemorating. This is another copy of it. And another copy of it. This person really liked this particular issue. And we're back to Commonwealth Games here, not Olympic. And this is the Satanant, and these were uh, in uh, 1978. Here they are as used, the prior were mint. Again, the flower series. And again, more uh, First Nations. More blocks of First Nations, these are two mint blocks. Another Christmas issue in 1978, and ice vessels in 1978. This is a block of four, and there's several underneath. This is an inscription block because it has inscriptions on the side. Again, a one and two dollar Canadian stamp. Same issues from 1979 in mint. And then two Satanants at the bottom. These are the uh, 19, what is the date on these? It doesn't have, oh, 1979 issues. It's interesting to note that we still have a, a lower denomination stamp of one cent in 1979. I'm not sure, I think those were put out because it was to make up postage from the year before. Again, a Satanite used, Satanite used. This is an interesting set. This is the Provincial Flags for Canada Day in 1979. It's missing one there. However, the next page shows the entire set. Again, these are quite coveted by collectors because they're bright, they're colorful, they're cheerful. Some more First Nations in blocks. 1979 Christmas. And again, some more First Nations. Canada puts out a lot of aircraft stamps. These are some examples of that. That's it for today. Uh, we will be doing more modern Canadian stamps on our next video. For the time being, keep on collecting. Stamp Sleuth signing off. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. It's free and it helps us out. Bye-bye.